Hi, my name is Corporal Valentine. I'm a technician with the Snowbirds, and today I'm going to run you through aircrew extraction. So I'm going to break down my brief into five different parts. Part one will be a walk around of the aircraft. I'll show you the danger areas, I'll show you access points of the nose section of the center fuselage and the aft section of the aircraft. Part two will be how to open up the canopy to get inside the cockpit. Part three will be engine shutdown procedures. Part four will be the aircrew extraction. And then part five will be removing aircrew personal equipment. So starting at the front, we have a battery. And the battery is under this panel here, and there's one on the other side as well. Um, in the mid-90s, we switched from lead-acid batteries to NICAD. The NICAD batteries are really safe, they're really stable, they don't overheat or catch on fire. If in the event that you need to access the battery, all you have to do is grab a flathead screwdriver, and then turn all these fasteners a quarter turn counterclockwise, and the panel's going to pop down, and you'll have access to the battery. To disconnect the battery, you just want to turn this fastener counterclockwise. There's lock wire holding it, but it's pretty weak. It'll snap right off. And then you have some clips here that you'll pull out. Disconnect this bar and you can pull the battery right out. In the cockpit, there are lots of different instruments. And some of them have trefoils because they're slightly radioactive. They're painted with tritium. It's not a huge danger. But we do have a whole quarantine procedure, so if you crack a gauge, just let one of us know as soon as possible. Okay, moving on. Right here we have an intake, and on the other side we've got one as well. So we have two air intakes for a single engine. And if you're trying to climb into the canopy, you're going to feel a bit of suction pulling on you. But it's not very strong, and it's a small hole, so there's no danger of getting sucked inside like on a bigger jet. And if you're trying to fight an engine fire, this is a really good access point. Just come up, put your hose in, spray it, and hopefully it'll put out the fire. Under this panel, we have an oxygen cylinder, and on the other side, there's one as well, same location. And they're about 20 liters each, or maybe four or five gallons. And they're pressurized to between 1200 and 1800 PSI. If they start to overheat and overpressurize, there's a rupture disc built right into it. So the rupture disc is going to burst and the oxygen will just vent into the atmosphere. There's no danger of explosion. So in this section of the aircraft is where we keep all the fuel. There are five different fuel bladders, one gravity fed into the other. It's uh, either going to be F-34 or Jet A fuel with the additive of FSII or Prist for anti-icing purposes. And I'd say there's about a 1,200 liters or 300 gallons max. And if the jet's flying around for a bit, it'll be a bit less, but still that's hundreds and hundreds of gallons or liters in there. Um, if the jet starts to leak fuel, then it's not going to stop. So you're going to have to contain that much. What's really common is when the jet shuts down, it's going to vent off a bit of fuel so it doesn't get a hot start the next time. If you see a bit of dripping underneath the jet, then that's okay. If it keeps going, then you're going to have to contain about a few hundred liters of fuel. So underneath the jet, there are two different tanks, so one on either side, and we fill them with diesel. That's actually what we use to make our white smoke in the shows. It's vented to the rear exhaust and it burns up and turns white in the atmosphere. So they hold about 20 gallons or 80 liters each, and they're bolted right onto the aircraft. It's happened in the past where the landing gear malfunctions and won't come down. In that case, the jet's going to land right on these tanks. There's no way to jettison them. And the tanks are most likely going to rip up and spill diesel everywhere. This is the fire access door, and it's only on the left-hand side. You're not going to find one on the other side. So to fight an engine fire, this is where you want to come. The door is pretty simple to open. It's hinged at the bottom here, and you just have to push it in with your hose or with your hand. And, and it will even clip up for you, and then you have access to the engine. Now, when you're coming up to this door, there's three different things you want to look out for. Number one is the flap. The flaps are hydraulically activated, so with the engine running, it could potentially retract flush with the rest of the aircraft, and you can press your hand in there. And then, same thing with the speed brakes. They're also hydraulically activated. They can retract flush with the aircraft, so just make sure you don't get crushed in there. And then the third thing to look out for 
is the hot air blast. It comes out at about a 45 degree angle. So ideally you want to approach the door from this direction. If you come in here, you're going to get a bunch of hot air in your face. All right, coming to the rear of the aircraft, we have our exhaust pipe and the exhaust comes out at about a 60 degree angle and it's dangerous back to about 200 feet. So the number one rule is to just not walk behind the aircraft if it's running. If you have to go on the other side, say duck underneath or go around front, but don't walk behind the aircraft and you'll be safe. Okay, so to open up the canopy, there's four different ways to get inside and all the controls are on this side of the aircraft. If you go on the other side, you're not going to find anything. So first way to get in is to open this door. Just press the square here, drop the door down, and you're going to find two switches. You want to push them both to the rear of the aircraft at the same time. And you just hold on to them. The canopy is going to open all the way and it will stop on its own once it reaches the top. Second way to get in is to use the hand crank and it tells you right on the door, open this clockwise. And as you can see, it takes a while, so hopefully you don't have to use it. Third way to get in is to use the canopy jettison. It's under this rescue door here. Same deal, just press the square, drop it down, and you're going to grab this handle, pull it out, walk away from the aircraft. The cable should come tight before you reach the edge of the wing, and then you just want to pull on it. And the canopy will separate from the airframe and shoot back about 20 feet. And then the fourth way to get in is to grab a circular saw and cut a rectangle out of the plexiglass, and then you can walk right in. If you do decide to cut through the canopy with a circular saw, there is going to be a risk to occupants if the canopy plexiglass does melt and drip on them, so just be careful for that. To climb into the cockpit, you want to press this button and then drop down this step. You can kick in that step with your right foot and then just climb over. Now, before you climb in, it's really important to safety the ejection seats and the canopy jettison. And to do that, you want to cut three different cables. So you've got one behind each seat, and then one up top where the canopy meets the airframe. Okay, so you get inside, and the engine's running and power's on, so you want to shut that off. To shut down the engine, you want to grab the center throttle here, and you're going to bring it back, and then over, and then back all the way, and that will shut off the engine. If you just pull it back here, the engine will still be in idle, and it will still be running, you'll still hear it. So you have to go past the detent and then all the way back. And there's also a throttle on this side, but it's not going to work because all that's going to do is bring you back into idle. There's no way to switch past the detent with this throttle, so it has to be the center one. Great. So the next thing you want to do is shut off power. And to do that, you want to go to this center group of switches. The top left switch says master on, and it's a bit tricky. You actually have to grab the switch and pull it back and then drop it down. And that will shut off your fuel pump. And then the switch directly underneath it says master battery and you just want to push that down to the off position and powers off and now you can start to rescue the pilot. So well, right now I'm going to run through how to unstrap the pilot and he has a lot of different connections so if you're ever in a rush or if it's uh, something stuck then feel free to just cut his gear and pull him out because we can replace all the gear and we just want to get the pilot out ASAP. So starting at the top He's got his helmet with his oxygen mask and you want to take that off. So his oxygen mask is clipped in on either side and to undo it you just pull this buckle and then pull it out and then same deal on the other side pull this buckle pull it out and he's got his comm cord here you can either cut that or just pull it apart and with the helmet before you move on you want to pull down his visor just when you pull him out, you don't want him to smack his face on the canopy. Moving down to the other end of his oxygen hose, he has three different connections. So the first connection, you want to pull this red pull tab. That's right there. The next thing you want to do is disconnect the bigger green hose, and that just pulls apart. And then he's got a smaller green hose here, and it's a bit trickier to get out. You have to take the collar, push it in, rotate it, and then pull it out and you can just lay his mask off to the side.
The next thing you want to do is disconnect his shoulder harness and his lap belt, and that all comes together right in the center of his waist. So you have a big buckle here, you want to take this latch and pull it backwards, and then the latch underneath, you want to take that and pull it the opposite direction, and then everything comes apart. So his shoulder harness is off, his lap belt is off, and you want to be careful with this steel cable because right on the end you have an arming key and if this gets caught on anything or if you pull on it it's going to deploy his chute and that's going to be a big mess, it'll get stuck in the cockpit, it'll blow around in the wind. So just make sure you tuck this away so it can't get deployed. Um, the parachute is spring compressed, there's no explosives in there. Moving on. The next thing you want to dis disconnect is his maritime lanyard, and this is attached to the life raft in his ejection seat pack, and, or his survival seat pack. And to undo this, you're just going to pull the collar back, and then pull it out, and you can set it off to the side. And then, the last place the chute is connected, his chute is connected on either side to the survival seat pack. So you can just run your hand down and find a big square buckle. It says right on it, push to release, so push it, pull it apart, and then on the other side, you're going to find another buckle, and then also just push to release, and you can pull him out of the cockpit. So to pull the pilot out of the cockpit, you want to have a stable foot position, so put one foot on the center console, and one foot right up on the edge here, and you can grab him underneath his straps, pull him up, pass him out head first, So to take off his chute, it's pretty straightforward, you are going to find a big buckle in the center of his chest and it says right on it, turn to unlock, press to release, so follow the arrow, it only goes in one direction, turn it a quarter turn and then push down on it and everything comes apart. If it catches and it won't release then you want to cut him out and the best place to do that is through this shoulder harness just because this shoulder here has a big metal hose and it'll be harder to cut through. He may or may not be wearing a life preserver. If he is, just to take this off, you want to unbutton at the top, unbuckle at the bottom, and then unzip it here and he's out. And same deal as anything else. If the zipper gets stuck, then just cut alongside the zipper and you can pull him out that way. This concludes the aircraft emergency rescue procedures for the CTU-114 Tudor. If you have any questions, feel free to come ask anyone on the team, and thanks for keeping us safe. Enjoy the show.